Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my try a chapter book tag. If you don't know what the try a chapter book tag, basically it is where you gather like five or six books and over the course of some time you read the first chapter and then decide whether it is something that you would like to continue reading or not basically. So I decided to do this tag with books that I have had on my shelf for a really long time. It was time for me to be a little bit more critical with some of the books that I have. Right now I'm gonna share four of the books that I picked. The reason I'm only sharing four is because I actually asked you guys to help me pick two more books out of this shelf right here, but I wanted to share the four books that I picked myself for this challenge. Um, and I'm just gonna tell you guys a little bit about them and why I have had them just kind of sitting on my shelf for so long. The Iron Queen by Julie Kagawa. This was one of the first books that I bought um, when I started my book collection. I got the entire, I think it's a quartet, although I do believe that there is an actual like spin-off series. I remember I really liked the first book but um, I started reading this one and I wasn't feeling it and then I just haven't picked it up since. I want to give this another shot and if I don't end up liking it then I'm just gonna get rid of the entire quartet. Second one I picked up is one that I was this close to just getting rid of and it is The Scorch Trials by James Dashner. This is another trilogy that I picked up in a set. The first book was all right. I enjoyed it enough. I wasn't super into it. Uh, honestly, I wasn't even entirely sure that I wanted to read the rest of the trilogy. I mean, I figured I might as well give it a shot. We have two of my book outlet purchases here. The first one is The Nightmare Affair by Mindy Arnett. I've tried to read this book on several occasions. I really like the premise of this. Basically it is a girl who travels into like people's dreams or something like that. Um, I remember I was really really intrigued with the premise when I picked this up and I have refused to get rid of it because I really want to read this. And then last but not least we have Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge. I have heard really mixed things about this book. I think that's one of the reasons that why I've been putting it off for so long, but you guys know how I feel about retellings. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, I believe. We'll see where I fall with this book um, in terms of like how the rest of you guys feel about it. Um, I do really like the cover. I've always really, really loved the cover for this. That is going to be it for now. I will see you guys in a bit. You hear those birds? It's been a while since the intro, as you may have noticed, but this weekend I am actually going through... I'm going through reading the first chapter of the books that I promised. I actually have already started reading A Darker Shade of Magic. I'm fr definitely farther along than this because I was listening to the audiobook actually, but I'm definitely, definitely really enjoying this one. So I will continue to read it. So this is the first book in the Shades of Magic trilogy by Victoria Schlob. It opens with one of our main protagonists. His name is Kel and he is a traveler. More specifically, he is an interdimensional traveler. He is one of the few people who is able to travel between four different Londons. It's been a while since I read this so I can't remember which London is which. The one that has magic is the one that he comes from. And then Black Black London has been destroyed, Red London, and there's Grey London. It's basically like different versions of the same world. He is basically like a messenger between these different Londons and he talks to the rulers of each separate London. That is his job and we open the book with him um, and his amazing coat. So far so good. I'm really enjoying this. Now I'm gonna move on to book number two which I think will be The Nightmare Affair. So I'll go ahead and read the first chapter for that one and I'll let you guys know what I think about it in a little bit. So it is now a little bit later on in the day. You may have noticed we have switched positions because I am in my kitchen. I need to make lunch so I'm kind of multitasking. So I just finished chapter one of The Nightmare Affair by Mindy Arnett and I actually really liked it. This follows a girl named, oh crap, I already forgot her name. Did it say her name? Her name is Dusty. She is half nightmare, half human. Her mother is a nightmare, which is a magical creature who 
feeds off the dreams of humans. The first chapter jumps in right into the action when she is forced to break in to someone's house to get their dreams essentially and we find out that the person she is forced to get the dreams of the most popular boy in her old school of course however when she does she realizes that things are a little bit different with him his name is Eli his dreams are a lot more vivid than the other dreams that she has been feeding off of and his nightmare actually also takes place in Arkwell Academy, which is her new high school, which is a high school for magical beings or children of magical beings. Everything just seems really off and Eli is not supposed to know her. He's not supposed to see her when she is in his dream, but he somehow does. And that's kind of what happens in the first chapter. It was 22 pages, but I did fly through it. Um, I think it is a really fun Series. I will say though the most unbelievable part of this is that Eli is a sophomore in high school and he is supposed to be super muscular with a tattoo which like I don't know what high school you guys went to but that's something that definitely didn't happen in my high school particularly not for sophomores but regardless of that I did enjoy it I think it is going to be a very fun read and I can see obviously a romance is being set up even though it's probably not gonna be one of like my favorite books of all time I do think that it is gonna be a very fun fast paranormal romance type of read so I am going to continue reading this one let's see what do I continue with I'm just gonna go with this Force Trials rip off the band-aid I'll read the first three chapters of this because the chapters are pretty short 13 pages for the first three chapters and then I'll tell you guys what I think about it in a bit So book number two, done. I only read the first two chapters. This picks up right where the Mace Runner left off. So all the boys have been saved and they are sleeping and then kind of shit hits the fan. It was definitely nice to kind of be brought immediately back and just kind of thrown into the action of things. But I think the problem is that I just don't care. The first book was alright for me but I didn't fall in love with it. and yeah I'm just not interested so I think this is one that I'm gonna have to get rid of if I ever do become interested again like I'll just either borrow it from my library or I'll just watch the movie although I'm not even entirely sure is there a third movie coming out I haven't seen anything about it this goes in my note pile next I think I'm gonna go with Cruel Beauty I'm excited about this one I love retellings so we'll see how it goes make food for everybody and my mom brings in and out. I mean I'm not complaining but yeah I'm not complaining never mind. We're back in my room and I just finished the first chapter of Cruel Beauty and I really liked it. I don't know why I never finished reading this because I did actually start reading this at some point. I like the characters and I really like where the story is going. Now when I say I like the characters I will say I like they're pretty hateful at this point, but I think they're interesting. Basically, this follows a girl named Nyx who lives with her dad, her aunt, and her younger twin sister. And this is all taking place the night before she is to get married off to a monster, or who they refer to as a monster. I'm guessing it's the beast. She is set to marry him and kill him and avenge their mother. So at this point she is very resentful towards her father because her father is the one who basically sold her off and her aunt is an amazing piece of work. <laughs> That's basically the first chapter and I really like it. I'm really really intrigued. I don't understand the magic of this. I think it's magic. What is it? The her hermetic arts? I'm not entirely sure what that is but I'm sure if I keep reading it'll this makes sense um, but at this point like I want to know why her father sold her off and I want her aunt to suffer I'm not a fan of the aunt this is going in my safe pile next I am going to continue on with the Iron Queen by Julie Kagawa which is the second book in the Iron Fae quartet I'll just go ahead and read this and I'll let you guys know my thoughts of it in a little bit I got through 19 pages of the first chapter which is 23 pages 
So I was close to finishing this first chapter, but honestly, I remember a lot less of this than I thought I would. And I was about to like see if maybe recaptains had done recaps of at least the first book in this series, but honestly, I think that just like with the Scorch Trials, I just don't care anymore about this series. Like it's been so long that I just don't remember. I have no interest of rereading the first one and honestly I don't think I want to continue on with it so this is gonna be another one that I'm gonna get rid of um, which is kind of sad because it is such a pretty cover and I'm moving on to the last book here it is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon this one is one that I'm super excited about because I have heard so many good things this is my kind of book it already comes with like diagrams and does it have a map oh yes as a map. So I'm gonna get started with this and I will let you guys know what I think about it in a second. Here's the first chapter of The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon and I really like it. I am definitely intrigued. This takes place in sort of an alternative future reality where people with psychic abilities run amok. However, being a psychic is illegal. Having any sort of clairvoyant powers is illegal and they are usually hunted down and killed. Our main protagonist, Paige, is a clairvoyant, I believe, can actually travel outside of her body. Because of this and because, you know, she could very well die any given moment, if anybody finds out her secret, she turns to a life of crime and she is part of this underground gang. I like the setup for the world that we have gotten so far. I really like Paige as a character. She seems to be someone who has gone through a lot in a very short time and I really want to continue. I almost kept reading on to chapter 2 but I need to wrap up this video before the sun sets. I'll continue this later. Out of the six books that I set out to read today. I currently only really want to get rid of these two. Because I'm getting rid of these two, that means that these books are also coming along with them. I'm gonna be getting rid of these seven books. So that is gonna be it for this video. Those are all the books that I'm getting rid of. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this and let me know if you want me to do something like this again in the future. But that is gonna be it for now. I really hope that you guys liked it and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Thank you.